Today's word of the day comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 19, verse 20. Numbers, chapter 19, verse 20. It says, but the man who is unclean and does not purify himself, that person shall be cut off from among the the assembly because he has defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. The water of purification has not been sprinkled on him. He is unclean. Amen. But the man who is unclean and does not purify himself, that person shall be cut off from among the assembly because he has defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. The water of purification has not been sprinkled on him. He is unclean. Amen. Well, these words in the Old Testament, the law, they sound really hard and difficult because if we read them as literal things, and in this particular chapter, it was talking about even being in the same room as a person who died, and then they had to be unclean for seven days, and they had to go through this ritual cleaning that they could be clean again. Well, the truth is God was giving them those instructions because he wanted to keep them healthy. As we know, uh, whether it's the food we eat or the things we touch, there's germs, there's all kinds of things. And God was giving these, these instructions primarily to keep them healthy and safe. But ultimately, it's a spiritual story. It was never meant to be about what the Pharisees made it to be, which is a bunch of rules and that they would be clean because they did these things, these ritual cleanings. But in their hearts, there was no cleansing that was happening. In John 6, verse 63, Jesus said, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. It's not about the letter of the law and doing the right thing. It's about what is it God saying spiritually in this story, including in the book of Numbers. The word tells us that they received the same spiritual guidance, but they didn't receive it because they were they were not they, they were acting in the flesh and so they were not blessed because of it. The word is spirit and it must be spiritually discerned and thank God that when we give our lives to him, he gives us his spirit. He makes us alive in the spirit and it comes to life. But let's talk about what real spiritual cleansing looks like. John chapter 15, verse 3 says, Jesus said to the disciples, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Wow. The word makes us clean. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 27 says, husbands, love your wives. And just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify her, uh, sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. It's, it's not about some ritual thing with certain kind of water on certain days. It's about God cleansing us. And he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that he should be holy and without, or she should be holy with him without blemish. So all that stuff in the Old Testament, talking about these rules and when you're kicked out of the camp and all that stuff, it's all about the cleansing of the Word of God and His work in us. Praise the Lord. Now, let's uh, let's read a little bit of, from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17, and see if it gives us more light on this subject. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come and that he should depart from this world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Praise the Lord for that. And supper being ended, the devil, having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. And he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing now you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. The word became flesh, 
Jesus, the word, the word is the one that does the cleaning, the cleansing. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I know that there's a temptation for all of us to just go and wash people's feet. And there's probably nothing wrong with that, but that's not much different than what the Israelites were trying to do, literally doing these things, rather than looking at what Jesus was actually demonstrating. And we know that the washing of the word washes people. And we also know that prayer lifts people up to God who does wash people. And then we see that we are already clean because he's drawn us to himself and we've received Christ. But we walk in a dirty world. And when we walk each day in this world, we get our feet dirty. We either stumble from our own flesh or we see things and we're surrounded by things that are not spiritually clean. And it's through praying for one another and sharing scripture with one another and edifying one another that our feet are washed each and every day as we go through this world. When we sin, that's a spot. And when we confess, someone prays for us and we're cleansed again. And so, Lord, we just thank you for how all the way through the Bible, you were always talking about spiritual things. It's just whether people understood them or not. And you tell us today, Lord, that we need to be cleansed. And we are. We thank you that you have cleansed us. We're on this call. That means we're clean. We're not here out of just trying to be somebody or do something on our own. You've redeemed us, and we thank you for that. But we do get spiritually our feet dirty, and we pray, Lord, that you help us quickly, quickly confess our sins or get prayer, even if we've been around spiritually dark things, even if we haven't sinned, and get prayer and be in your word and, and be in fellowship so that we can stay clean and uh, presentable. And we know that you are the one who will cause us to do it and so we ask you to always move us to do those things and um, that no one would defile your temple and we are your temple. We thank you for this word today. Thank you for showing us. You've always been talking about the same thing. We give you all glory, honor, and praises in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's our word of the day. Praise the Lord. <laughs>